Hello and welcome to WePC. My name's Jack and today we're going to be looking at Intel 12th Gen's Big Cores vs Little or Atom Cores. Before we get into it, can I please ask that you like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It really helps us out and we have loads of 12th Gen 12900K content and DDR5 content out on the channel right now. So go and check that out if you're interested. Okay, so Intel has a new technology in its 12th Gen flagship CPU. And that technology is called Little Big. Essentially, the 12900K has inside eight hyperthreaded performance cores and eight non hyperthreaded Atom cores, the jobs of which differ slightly. The bigger performance cores handle larger loads such as gaming and video rendering. The smaller Atom cores are clocked lower and are way more power efficient, boasting a much lower TDP but still pack a decent punch for what they are. These cores handle lower intensity tasks like video playback, word processing, and web browsing. Instead of getting the heavy power hungry cores to do everything all the time, all the little cores handle the lower end stuff, so we're not wasting much power. Cool tech. This might seem like a bit of a pointless benchmark. Performance cores versus big cores. Obviously the performance cores are going to win, but I'm just doing this for fun, and the results may actually surprise you. So let's kick these benchmarks off then. First we have control, and you can see the light load being shared between all eight big cores. Of course, I don't have enough room to display threads too, but here we are. Same story on the little cores, but the Atom cores do have a single performance core to utilise. The results are average FPS of 133, 1% of 109 and 0.1% of 97 for the big cores, and 127 FPS average, 1% of 97 and 0.1% of 4940 little cores. 4K then, and you can see a very interesting utilisation pattern along the big cores. Not too sure why it's doing this, but Control isn't a very CPU intensive game, more graphical. And the little cores are just managing to keep up. Average FPS from 69, 1% of 59 and 0.1% of 23 for big cores. Averages of 68, 1% of 57 and 0.1% of 53 for little cores. Some CS go there. AWP Simulator is a surprisingly CPU bound game. And you can definitely see the difference in FPS here. Despite the little cores being much slower, they do manage to utilise the performance core and output a respectable FPS. Average of 358, 1% of 93, 0.1% of 50 for the big cores, and averages of 297, 1% of 112, and 0.1% of 59 for the little cores. And in 4K, we see a very similar story. Although I do see a much heavier usage on the CPU with the little cores than I do big cores. Almost double. Interesting. The little cores do seem to have to work a lot harder to chuck out some decent frames. Average FPS of 337, 1% of 131, 0.1% of 61 for the big cores. Averages of 272, 1% of 93 and 0.1% of 56 for the little cores. Cyberpunk. And this game is so unoptimized it hurts. You can see again a similar story than in CSGO. The little cores are working just under twice as hard to keep things going, but it's just not quite enough. As the big cores do come out on top, averages of 98, 1% of 83, 0.1% of 79 for big cores, averages of 69, nice, 1% of 57 and 0.1% of 54 for the little cores. Board okay now, and it's much of the same. The little cores doing very well but having to work a lot harder to keep up. Still turns out a very respectable FPS since this scene with a lot of pedestrians is pretty CPU intensive. Average is 74, 1% of 63, 0.1% of 60 for big cores, 69, 1% of 57 and 0.1% of 54 for the little cores. Some days gone now, and with the Atom cores loaded and a 3090 basically going at full tilt, even in 1440p, the performance cores seem to be breezing through days gone, never hitting 50% utilisation. Averages are 153, 1% of 102, 0.1% of 59 for big cores. Averages of 145, 1% of 76 and 0.1% of 24 for the little cores. We see massive little core CPU utilizations in 4K of up to 77% as the CPU coordinates the GPU in 4K. Big cores again, breezing through days gone on the utilization side, barely breaking a sweat. But the results are closer than you might think. Average of 91, 1% of 69, 0.1% of 57 for big cores. Averages of 90, 1% of 60, 0.1% of 52 for little cores. Far Cry 6 now, easily the newest title and one decently hard to run. Oddly, we see a higher GPU utilization on the performance core system. Could the CPU be a bottleneck here? What do you guys think? Unsurprisingly, again, the performance cores come out on top here. Averages of 104, 1% of 83, 0.1% of 72 for big. 
91 average, 1% of 54, and 0.1% of 11 for a little. In 4K, we see the GPU utilizations increase, unsurprisingly, and CPU utilization decrease across the board. And surprisingly, this time the performance cores fail to perform, pardon the pun, as the Atom cores come out on top here. Averages of 68 FPS, 1% of 61, and 0.1% of 52 for big. Averages of 69, 1% of 53, and 0.1% of 32 for little. Gas Station Simulator is next, and this game is horribly optimised. There's no telling how Gas Station Simulator is going to utilise your computer's hardware, and you can see the utilisation for both CPUs and GPUs dancing about all over the place. The FPS isn't terrible, but the performance cores, unsurprisingly, do come out on top. Averages are 127, 1% of 90, 0.1% of 55 for big, averages of 111, 1% of 59, and 0.1% of 54 for little. In 4K, the story is similar. feel like I'm repeating myself a lot here. But the little cores are working a heck of a lot harder to keep up with the performance cores. But it's well worth it. Kudos to the little cores for only falling behind by 1 FPS. Average of 76, 1% of 58, 0.1% of 41 for big. Averages of 75, 1% of 48, and 0.1% of 13 for little. New World is a game where CPU performance really matters. And it's going to be interesting to see here. Ah, <laughs> sorry, my 3090 was on fire. And you can see the performance cores blow the little cores straight out of the water. Boom. Averages of 131, 1% of 76, 0.1% of 20 for big. Averages of 84, 1% of 46, and 0.1% of 32 for little. But for some reason in 4K, the little cores do better in this footage. But that's because I did record the footage in bulk and forgot that time of day is a thing and it affects performance. So I returned and redid the test later, just didn't record it because I'm, I'm, I'm smart like that. The results are as follows. Averages of 77, 1% of 65, 0.1% of 17 for big. Averages of 69, 1% of 30 and 0.1% of 18 for little. Hello Rust, love you, not really. The utilisation follows the same pattern we've seen all through the benchmark. But Rust seems to be where the performance cores really shine, as they output vastly more FPS here than the little cores. Averages of 129, 1% of 87, 0.1% of 49 for big. Averages of 73, 1% of 15, and 0.1% of 6 for little. Rust is a weird one. Because of a map and players and physics, the FPS can differ a lot, even if you're doing the exact same thing all the time. But that's not representative of real world, and that's what we do here. So, Averages of 98, 1% of 76, and 0.1% of 44 for big. Average of 75, 1% of 13, and 0.1% of 7 for little. Now here in the single core Cinebench benchmark, you may be inclined to believe that these results are illegitimate. Really but remember the single performance core we couldn't disable in the little core benchmark? Well, it's here to haunt us again. And cheat for the little cores, as we have to have one performance core running we can't disable them all in the BIOS. So that's why the results are practically the same here. 1939 for big cores and 1954 for the little cores. It is a vastly different story in the multi-core benchmark, however. It's amazing to see just how much both little and big cores contribute towards the score. 18902 with just big cores and 9202 with just little cores. Don't be too quick to add them together though. You'd be counting a core twice. You can't just give them a score by adding them together. Still very interesting to see it separately though. Blender is up next. And it's unsurprising to see that the massively faster performance cores make very little work of the Blender BMW render. Taking only 2 minutes and 10 seconds, whereas the little atom cores took a brew cooling 4 minutes and 26 seconds. Ouch. Well, this was it for my little experiment, I guess. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video and check out all our over 12th gen and DDR5 content here on the channel. This has been Jack from WePC, and I'll see you in the next one.